Well, good morning, everyone. We are in Alice Springs. We actually arrived in the dark, and now it's 5 a.m., and we're about to depart in the dark, so we won't actually see much of Alice Springs. It was a long day yesterday, and it will be a long day today because our original intention was not to stay in Alice Springs. We were going to camp tonight in Tennant Creek. But no, in Calgara, sorry. We were going to camp in Calgara, but because of the detour that we did, we're actually three hours ahead of schedule, which means we went past Calgara and ended up staying in Alice Springs. So rather than staying in Tennant Creek tonight, we're leaving early to try and push and get further closer to, to Darwin. So we're hoping to stay perhaps at Daly Waters or a free camp along the way, and then tomorrow another long day into Darwin. So uh, time to hit the road, I think. Uh, I think there's a Macca's in Alice Springs, so we're going to try and find some coffee and then hit the road. Welcome to one of my most ambitious projects. This trip will see us travelling 13,000 kilometres across Australia to some of the most remote and amazing places. So we left Alice Springs at five o'clock. It was still pitch black. And we've been watching the sun come up just behind me. Now, the sun hasn't actually come up yet, but we've seen first light and it's been slowly changing color from a dark glow to pink to orange. And now it's starting to go a bit yellow and orange and pink further up. It's absolutely amazing. Stop by the side of the road to have a better look and take some photos. And the thing that amazed me the most was not the sunrise, but the smell of the bush. It smells so beautiful. It's it's like it's like cinnamon and freshly baked cookies. It is absolutely amazing. Now we're coming up to a place called Tea Tree, which is about 100 kilometers down the road. And I don't know what a tea tree smells like, but maybe that's what I'm smelling now. But it is absolutely beautiful. It's really, really lovely. So as the old saying goes, you need to stop every now and then and smell the flowers because the smell of the bush out here is just sublime. It's absolutely beautiful. So now I'm going to watch the, uh, the sunrise and carry on. Well, you never know what you'll find in the Australian bush. I found three camels just grazing in the field here.
Oh my god, the speed limit is 130 and I have lead foot Susie driving. Yay! <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Absolutely loving this uh, yellow grass. It's just stunning. The uh, light reflects off it and changes colour throughout the day. It glows. It's so lovely. I'm on the hunt. I'm on the hunt for a termite mound. Now, we have just crossed over into the Tropic of Capricorn and so that means we've crossed over from the temperate zone into the tropical zone and I started seeing termite mounds. There were no termite mounds in the temperate zone but pretty soon after crossing into the tropical zone I started seeing termite mounds. This termite mound here, this is one of the first ones we've seen and they get bigger and bigger the further north we get. They get massive. So these are the very first termite mounds and they're quite hard, like stone. I can't believe that I actually saw camels today. It's such a, um, such a rare sight to see and I've been wanting to see camels in the wild for years and years and years and I've traveled all over the place and I've never seen a camel out in the wild. Now I don't know 100% if these were wild camels or fenced off. They were on the other side of the fence so I'm presuming that they were on the outside of the property but uh, they were just grazing away in the grass and it was really fantastic so I decided to see nonetheless. Uh, now, the other thing that I've noticed is there's a big difference in the quality of food and coffee between roadhouses. Now, we stopped off at a particular roadhouse this morning and got some coffee and all he could offer us was uh, coffee from a machine. At the time you just press the button and out it comes and it's done. And it was um, pretty average, pretty average indeed. The next one we stopped at, which was only 80 k's down the road, we got some nice coffee and uh, it was really good. Much, much better. Proper barista machine, coffee machine coffee. Uh, yeah, so we didn't make our own. We're traveling long distances. We don't want to stop and get the stove out and make our own and wait for it to cool down. So that's why we decided to go help the local economy at the various roadhouses. Anyway, uh, Susie's behind the steering wheel. Say hello, Susie. Hi. She is concentrating very hard. We're doing 130. And uh, I think this is her first day driving at 130. It takes some getting used to. Uh, I've been to the Northern Territory a few times before, so I've I spent a, quite a fair bit of time driving at 130 and it takes a while to get used to it but then once you're used to it it's fine it almost 110 almost feels slow in comparison so um, yeah it's early morning it's nine o'clock we've got a very long way to go and uh, I'm just gonna sit back now and relax being a passenger and enjoy the scenery while I've still got the camera running uh, one thing I've noticed is when we're driving at after sunset or before sunrise, so when we're driving in the dark, we have to have our spotlights on and the LED light bar on. But otherwise, um, you just don't see anything. It is so pitch black that normal headlights are completely ineffective. Even high beam is completely ineffective. You really need to have your spotties on in order to see properly. And when you're doing 130, and there could be wild, uh, wild animals that jump out on the track, you really need to be able to see, not just straight ahead, but sideways as well. So you really need your spotlights. When you see an oncoming car, 
way, way off in the distance, of course you dip them and they do the same. But what I've noticed people doing occasionally is they put their spotlights on before they actually get past you and that blinds you for a split, split second and that's just really really bad etiquette, bad road rules, road manners. Wait till you're past somebody and then put your high beams back on. But anyway, that's my only gripe. Apart from that, it's been a really good run so far. <sighs> we just stopped off at a place called Wycliffe Well. Now, I've been here several times before. This is known as the UFO capital of Australia. And it's basically a truck stop that is themed with the UFO memorabilia, newspaper clippings, t-shirts with the UFOs on them, etc. Good marketing because there's nothing else in the surrounding area, so if you're going to stop anywhere, why not stop there? Uh, but it was, it was pretty cool, I bought a couple of little memorabilia things. Although it is very different from the last time I was here, it looks abandoned and it looks like there was a fire. The Roadhouse at Wycliffe Well opened its doors in 1985. It was created by a former Royal Australian Navy sailor who was looking for a change and saw an opportunity for a roadhouse in the middle of nowhere. Over the years, the owner started seeing strange things in the area, which he described as UFOs. However, since the roadhouse and caravan park had quickly grown in popularity, he kept these sightings to himself. Before long, a journalist wrote a story about these potential sightings and suddenly the popularity of the roadhouse exploded. The owners capitalised on this and embraced the new interest, declaring Wycliffe Well the UFO capital of Australia. That is a sad sight to see. Completely burnt out. After owning it for a few decades, the business was sold in 2010 to a new owner who sold it within a few years to United Petroleum. The new owners were only interested in selling fuel and let the rest of the business become dilapidated. This was somebody's business. I remember coming here buying souvenirs and now it's completely and utterly trashed. The end finally came in 2022. During a major flood, the owners evacuated to higher ground and when they returned, the property fell victim to vandals. They weren't interested in rebuilding the iconic roadhouse and have since left it abandoned. It is such a pity. Such a pity that this has uh, been left to be abandoned. This is a nice little campground. And also, it looks like it's happened fairly recently. <sighs> so, the uh, famous UFO capital of Australia is is no more. Well, after that surreal experience, we hit the road again and we're heading towards Tennant Creek. We were actually originally going to stay in Tennant Creek, but since we were making good time, we decided we were going to fuel up and then push on. Well, 
Well, we've gone past Eden Creek and we've just found a beautiful spot by the side of the road to have some lunch. This is a rest stop. There's a few other cars around. We've just uh, had lunch. Uh, got the awning up, getting some shade. It's really, really comfortable. And uh, I think after another 10 minutes, we're going to push on. We're heading to a place called uh, Newcastle Waters, which is a free camping site. Uh, we'll see whether we like the look of that and how we're feeling because we've been on the road since uh, before five. So we'll see how we're feeling by then. If we feel energetic enough, we might even push on to Daly Waters. We'll see how we go. How are you going, Susie? I'm good. What do you think of this spot? It's awesome. Had lovely lunch. Beautiful breeze. Absolutely beautiful. Weather's starting to warm up. It's summertime. We're in our shorts. It's lovely. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to the next few weeks of essentially tropical summertime because everyone else back home is freezing to death. <laughs> so um, this will be wonderful. Can't wait. We have just arrived at the township of Newcastle Waters and check this out. I can see pelicans and all sorts of water birds there and I can actually smell salt water. It smells like the ocean but we're about 800 kilometers from Darwin so it can't be salty can it? I don't think so. Well we have arrived in the township of Newcastle Waters and there's a big sign that says no camping. Now the information about actually camping here came from Facebook and so that is possibly old news or incorrect at the very least because there's no campsite here, no camping allowed. But um, there's a very pretty little park and you can see that around me. This plaque commemorates the explorer John McDougall Stewart and his companions. Stewart discovered the local waters on the 23rd of May 1861 during his fifth expedition. He named them Glanfield Lagoon, but the name was later changed to Newcastle Waters to honour the Duke of Newcastle, Secretary of State for the Colonies. Stewart and his companions again passed through this district in 1862 on his sixth expedition. They became the first Europeans to cross the continent from south to north through the centre without loss of life. So there you go, that is very interesting. 1861. And there's a tiny, tiny little school here. Looks like there's only one classroom, probably only 10 students, I'd, I'd imagine. And uh, there's two houses up the road there, and that's all I can see around here. It's a peaceful little place. But uh, looks like we're not going to be camping here, so. It's an hour and a half drive to the next place, which is Daly Waters. Well, we've been on the road for about nine and a half hours now and uh, still feeling pretty fresh and alert. Uh, Susie, how are you feeling? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yes. We've got uh, another hour to go to our desired camping spot. I don't know if we're going to stay there yet, we'll see. If we don't like it, we'll move on to the next place. As we're pushing further and further north, the vegetation is changing. The trees are getting taller. There seems to be a little bit more green. The dry creek beds are no longer dry, they're full of water. So things are slowly getting more and more tropical, more and more greener. And it's getting more and more hotter. 
It's now 28 degrees and it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, and I can see a mirage up ahead. There's some shimmering, what looks like shimmering water on the right is just a mirage, but I always love seeing that. Can we go swimming? <laughs> can we go swimming? <laughs> it's hot! There might be crocs in there, there might be mirage crocs. Well, you go in first. Okay, I'll go in first, deal. <laughs> It's got shade, it's got big trees and shade. It's about 4.30 and we came across a station called Dunmara Station and they have this beautiful campground out the back. It's all grass, there's a boab tree up just over there, there's a termite mound over there, there's uh, yeah, beautiful green grass, nice trees and it's nice and peaceful so we're staying here tonight camping finally and uh, that means we've only got about 650 k's to do tomorrow to get to Darwin. The sun is uh, getting lower and lower in the sky and it is beautiful it's still probably about 28 degrees and it is just lovely. The um, station here they've got uh, some sprinklers going and that's why the grass is so nice and green and we can feel some mist coming our way which is really lovely and uh, we've got wine, we've got crackers, we've got cheese, just enjoying the beautiful summer weather. Now, Susie, yes. um, what's been some of the highlights of the trip so far for you? Oh my gosh, the sunsets. <laughs> the sunsets. And, su and sunrise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunsets and sunrise is just amazing. It, it is. It's absolutely amazing. It's, just the colours. It's like being in Africa. Yeah. Oh, the sunsets when with the um, orange. Everything's orange, and the, everything in the foreground is all black, silhouetted black. Yeah. It is beautiful. Then we've got the Earth's atmosphere, the shadow on the Earth's atmosphere, which oh. I haven't shown you guys yet, but I will show you at the, the next opportunity. I'll film that. The most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Yeah. It is just the colours of the sunset, the sunrises, the colour of the sky, all throughout the day. It is just sensational. Yeah. Yeah. And my favourite part, apart from that, is camels. the camels. <laughs> but also, I'm just enjoying the the light, the colour of everything, especially during the golden hour, which is an hour before and after sunrise and an hour before and after sunset. Everything turns a beautiful golden colour, but it is green and gold. And actually, when I think of the Australian colours of green and gold, I think of what I'm seeing here, the beautiful gold of the sunset, the gold of the grass, the green, the faded green of the leaves and, and grass and trees. It is, to me, that is Australia. And that's what the green and gold colours mean to me, the Australian outback. It is just absolutely sensational. The, the sunsets, the colour of the rocks that are glowing at sunset is just spectacular. The colour of the, the red earth in the Northern Territory, it's full of iron ore, so it's red. It is just breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. So we've seen a lot of interesting things so far, and this is only the start of our trip. So we have a few more weeks to go, and the actual mm -hmm. trip will start after we leave Darwin. So tomorrow we're going to Darwin, and then we're going to get to the real interesting part of the trip. Oh, tonight's dinner will be pretty basic. I'm just cooking some hot dogs. I've got some tomato sauce, some mustard, I've got some shredded cheese, and good old white bread. So that's all we found along the way. So um, yeah, tonight's dinner, very, very basic. Uh, we don't really feel like anything more than this. Tomorrow we're going to hit Darwin and then we'll do a proper shop and then then we'll do some proper cooking out in the bush and I'm really really looking forward to that. The trip so far has been really really fantastic. It's four extremely long days of driving, doing 130 kilometers per hour for nine hours straight today with the occasional 15 minute to 10 minute break. Um, 
50, you cover a long distance, but it is tiring. So yeah, uh, dinner is just about ready and uh, ah, tomorrow is going to be about eight hours of driving or eight hours in the car, probably six and a half to seven hours of driving. We'll do a couple of short stops here and there and uh, I'm, I'm aiming to reach Darwin by not later than three o'clock. So uh, hopefully tomorrow goes well and we get to Darwin in a reasonable time. Anyway, see you tomorrow. The following morning, we left early. I actually really enjoy driving in the dark, watching the sky change and the sun come up. It is a tranquil, beautiful experience. 50 kilometers down the road, we arrived at the place that we were originally planning to stay the previous night. Oh wow, looking packed out. New generator off in the distance. Oh, we were better off than we were. For 50 k's, look how packed out it is. Careful, goat. Ah, it's a goat. <laughs> this is Dally Waters. There are many unique places in the Australian outback, and this is by far the most unique I've come across. It is a bizarre, amazing place, filled with everything imaginable under the sun from decades and decades of collecting stuff. It's something you have to see. So we finally made it to the Daly Waters pub. And uh, this is an absolutely amazing place full of memorabilia. This would have taken about decades and decades to collect all the bits that they stuck on these. There's t shirts, there's bras, there's cups, there's stickers, and so on. I was saying, and it was just outside these old ruined airplanes and cars and helicopters and um, <laughs> traffic lights. There's a KFC sign up there somewhere. Um, it's quite an amazing place, I think. They collected the trash from everywhere and just um, artistically put it up here. It's just an amazing place. All right, so I stayed with a t-shirt up, up there. So we've made our mark on the Daly Waters pub. I'm going to stay for that. two business cards here. So next time you're here, try and spot them. I won't show you where I'm going to put these. So we are travelling along the Stewart Highway. We're halfway between Dali Waters and uh, Mataranka. Oh my god, there's heaps of road trains going past. There's actually a lot of traffic. We actually had a really nice night at our campsite. It was uh, a bit chilly towards the morning and a huge amount of mosquitoes. So we retreated to our tent really early. Today is a beautiful day and uh, we're probably going to arrive in Darwin in the early afternoon. One thing I really love about the Northern Territory is the colour of the grass. This spinifex is, is a yellow, sort of whitish yellow, and when the sun shines on it, it just glows, it's so beautiful. It's almost like covered being, being covered in snow. It is really, really lovely. 
and the yellow grass with the red dirt and the red rocks and the pale green leaves, it's just beautiful. Absolute cover. Susie in her natural habitat. <laughs> Well, we're getting near Darwin finally. We're about 160 kilometers from Darwin. The landscape is changing yet again. We're seeing more and more rocky terrain. We're seeing palm trees now. Uh, it's definitely getting a lot more hilly and the temperature is a constant 32 degrees. So uh, we're in for a beautiful uh, few weeks of summer up here. Uh, can't wait. Uh, we've got about an hour and 45 minutes until we arrive. So, it's been a very, very long drive. For us, it's been uh, almost 5,000 kilometers from home. And I think it works out to be 4,950 something. So, it's a lot of driving to do over, I think, five days. But, we're almost there now, so uh, I shall report again once we get to Darwin. Oh my goodness, we have just encountered our first red light in a, almost 4,000 kilometers. <sighs> what a strange sight. A red light now has turned green. <sighs> it's been a very, very long drive. We have 32 minutes to go. And we're there, coast to coast, very much looking forward to a, a rest and uh, as i'm sure the car is as well uh, yeah, it's, it was fun driving at 130 k's for a few days but uh it's a bit of a rest tonight and then tomorrow it's uh, time for more adventures Well, we finally made it after six days or 146 hours or 5,066 kilometers of grueling time on the road, but we finally made it to Darwin. You can see behind us the city and it's actually quite a small city. And then off to my left is the, the coast. So we've basically done coast to coast in uh, essentially five days from Port Augusta to Darwin, five days, a bit over 4,000 kilometers that stretch. And so we are pretty much buggered. Very tired, very, very tired. Very tired, but that's the end of the first part of our trip. Tomorrow begins the real adventure. I can't wait for what we've got in store for you tomorrow. So uh, we're gonna go have a check into our motel. Uh, have a rest and then tomorrow it's uh, full-on adventure time so join us tomorrow thanks for watching if you enjoyed this episode and want to see more before they're released on YouTube you can go to patreon.com slash forex adventures and sign up for a membership your support means the world to us see you in the next video